Welcome to the Creative Differences Podcast. I'm Gabby, and I should have seen this movie at 7 p.m. with a huge crowd. I'm Colin, and man, concert films are an experience, and I wish more of them existed. And I'm Demi, and Taylor Swift, I don't know what it's going to take for me to see you perform so it goes live, but I'm going to figure it out because I need to see you perform it live. Welcome to another episode of the Creative Differences Podcast, your one-stop shop for movie reviews, fancast Fridays, Throwback Thursdays, and a number of other pop culture-related items. Today, guys, we did it. We made it. We finally reviewed another movie. It's Woo. only been since July since we last did our last one. Woo. Today, we are going to be reviewing Taylor Swift, the Eras Tour film. See I assume this um, is because there are no SAG actors in it. No, no, there no. There technically was. If you stay until the end of the credits, it says SAG AFTRA. It has their it has their logo on it because Taylor Swift oh. is a member of SAG AFTRA. Oh. Also her yes. dancers, maybe? I don't know. I don't know I if don't her know dancers are, but she herself mm. is because she's been in several movies. Oh, and yeah. shout out to her. She supports the strike, which is why she went through them to make sure that she agreed to the interim deal, which allowed her to promote this film. Oh, that's awesome. Okay. The whole situation with the deal for that movie is 10 out of 10. Taylor Swift has probably just changed the game. Her and Beyonce. Well, Beyonce followed her lead. Oh, okay. I thought they, they did it to, at the same time for some reason. No, okay. I think Got I it. think Taylor Swift did it first and then Beyonce followed her lead. She was like, we could do that and then just did it. <laughs> I think that's what everybody's sort of like right now. They're like, oh, we can, we can just, we do can that. just talk to AMC directly. <laughs> All right, let's do that. All right, guys. So anyway, let's get this started. Uh, it's a concert film. It's directed by Sam Wrench, uh, and it stars Taylor Swift. And, and then her dancers. <laughs> yeah. And her dancers. And her, her band. vocalists. Her band. Yeah. I like them. that it's the same band she's always used. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And the IMDb summary is, experience the breathtaking era's tour concert performed by the one and only Taylor Swift. Yep. That's it. Yeah. Yep. All right. First impressions. Okay. So what I liked about this is it literally was just the concert. Like, you know how sometimes they're like, it's a concert film. And then they show their life in between. And I'm mm -hmm. like, this is a very nice documentary. This is not what I wanted. I wanted the concert. And that's what we got. And I wish they had just given us the entire concert. Like, I would have sat there for four hours. I don't care. Like, I already signed up for three. Just give me the whole thing. But I understand. Four sounds like so much. <laughs> Give us the uh, director's cut on physical release. Colin, what was your <laughs> yeah. initial uh, response as the newest member of the Swifty Club? Uh, first, shout out about the length to the dad who came out with, I'm assuming, like his daughter and her friends was like, oh my God, that was longer than a Greek tragedy. Like, <laughs> I just know it wasn't. <laughs> uh, oh. Well, he was man. there against his will. I, th I, that was the sense I got because then he like when he was leaving, he said like, "Oh, I can't wait to see that five more times." So it was kind of like, I did not want to do this, but you know what? What a dick! But also, what a good dad, I guess. I don't know. You don't have to be snarky anyway. Um, God, this was so good. Like, yeah, it's because it's, Taylor Swift's music is kind of hit or miss for me. There's some stuff like I don't really care about. But even the stuff I don't really care about, just seeing the artistry of it and how she chooses to present it is just so cool. Yeah. The and transitions like, yeah. were great. She, yeah, like she puts so much thought into it because obviously, of course, she's going to. But when you're thinking about, I haven't performed five albums live, how am I going to do that? Yeah. It's incredible. And also the endurance. Like, you know, she was oh on a treadmill God. singing. Yes. Oh, like, that's that the only way to learn. That's the only way to do it. That girl was working. Um, yeah, right. initial thought. I think I've been a Swifty the longest out of anybody on this podcast. I've been a fan of her since I was 15 or 16. So I've yeah, just I been... used to, I did listen to her in high school, but it was ironic. It was definitely, I was listening to her ironically. <laughs> and I was not. I absolutely was not. I became a Taylor Swift fan. Shout out to Angela because I was so anti-country, but she managed to get me to listen to Taylor Swift. And just, it's so cool to have been like, watching her career throughout all these years and then like to be at this point and watch this concert which is definitely a celebration of everything that she's put out over the last like 17 years as she said in the concert and yeah, yeah it's just like I first off I'm a huge fan of concert films I would love to direct a concert film I would have no idea how to do it but I would love to do it one day because it's so awesome to get the experience of the concert from all the best angles yeah mm -hmm. um, it's incredible the what Taylor put together and like you said like there's so much artistry in it like I 
people who don't like Taylor Swift, I tell them all the time, Taylor Swift is a fantastic performer and like she puts thought into everything that she does when it comes to her art like she lives and breathes it and get in like when you see it on stage like she's not just gonna throw something basic up she's gonna put her all into it and you can see it in this concert it's very dope yeah and for somebody that doesn't dance to like keep you that riveted for that long is very good I appreciate that Taylor Swift is, yeah, I was going to say, she's not the best dancer, but she has choreography and she does it. Like, yeah. And she will put her all into doing it, even if she is nowhere near as good as her backup dancers. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But she'll do it, but, though. But it's not Beyonce's dancing. Do you know what I mean? Like, no. No, no, it's no. Like for somebody or, it's Sierra, or Sierra or like, you know singers that like are pop singers that are janet jackson you know pop singers that are also like or britney spears like that are like amazing dancers she's not that but she's still no. like keeping you riveted and a lot of it's like just her emo the emotion that she puts in the songs and how excited she is and i think it's also that like yeah, she's not the best dancer, but she's clearly having fun and she is enjoying yeah. doing this yes and like I feel like that's one of the best things like I've watched. I think I've watched every single Taylor Swift concert film that's been released. There are um, others. <laughs> Sorry. There, I didn't I, know. Starting with like, was it Sparks Fly? Was that the first? Fear, the Fearless Tour, I think, was okay. like, I think the first one that she released. And I watched that one years ago, obviously, because it was out years ago. And then Reputation Tour is on Netflix. Oh, it um, is? Okay. Yeah, it came out the same time as her Miss Americana documentary. I've seen all of them and just she gets better with every single one. And one of the things that I love is that she always seems like she's enjoying being there. And she seems mm -hmm. like she genuinely appreciates the crowd that is there and the energy that she's getting from the crowd. And also just like her band and her backup vocalist and her dancers, you can feel the chemistry between all of them. You can feel that they all genuinely actually like each other. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They're all having a good time. Yeah. You could tell by the little looks they give each other as they're yep. like doing their little sort of ad lib moments. When they're yeah, dancing. They're, they're all having a good time. Or even like her band members who you can't hear singing along with her, but they are very clearly like shouting the lyrics with her because they've been with her so long and they know her music so well. Yeah. Um, and they're I very comfortable her. with her. Anytime the band was up on stage with her, I really like that moment because mm -hmm. it was just kind of like seeing a little family. I also love whenever her background vocalists are on stage with her because like their dynamic is also like they're so girl squad. Yeah. And it's and fantastic. They, and I love that they also change costumes. Like everybody had yes. costume changes. Oh my God, like yes. the band wasn't just in black. I thought they were gonna be black the whole time. They were not. It was great. Um, I it was, uh, it's just a very good show. I have adored Taylor's background vocalists for like I always want to say the last few years, but it, it's probably been like closer to 10. But ever since she's gotten like this quartet of background singers that she brings up with her, not just behind her, but literally with her. Since yeah. she started doing that, it's like one of my favorite aspects of whenever she performs. They have their own costume changes. Yeah. They have their own choreography. They are usually right up, the, up front with her, having a yeah. good time, looking at each other, looking at her, her looking at them. Like you can feel the connection and it's so good. Mike, I'm wondering, did they only film the LA show? It looks like, like they only, well, if it might have been, I think that they might have filmed several nights at SoFi. Yeah. But I'm wondering, the concert film they put out is the LA show. That's the SoFi show. Yeah, for sure. And I, okay. the last SoFi show. I <laughs> love that it's the SoFi show, though, because as soon as we started coming over the stadium, I was like, hey, 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 hometown, we in LA, boy. I was like, yes. Also, like, you're going to, you got kind of have to do SoFi. SoFi is like such a gorgeous stadium. Like, I can't wait till we go to SoFi together. I was disappointed that she didn't perform at the Rose Bowl, but once she yeah. did Bad Blood and they had the red lighting at the ceiling, I was like, mm -hmm. I get it. I get yeah. it now why you chose to do it at SoFi. You can't do that at the Rose Bowl. No, you can't. And, and, uh, and so, like, it's just such a gorgeous stadium. Like, I understand why everybody wants to perform there right now. Yo, and also I have uh, connections there, so we could go. Speaking of like beautiful Taylor Swift's production design, yes, is yo, I have never once considered going to a concert and sitting like in the stands. I'm a floor seats person. If I can't get floor seats, there's no point in me going to this concert. Mm -hmm. This tour yeah. is the first time I've ever been like, it actually would be really cool to sit in the stands because to, like of her see all flooring. of it. 
Yeah, yeah, because you can't see the flooring from the floor yeah. seats. That's the why way the, that the like concert itch. film is so great because you can see all of that. Like mm, the snakes. Like, I mean everything. Like yeah. when she's doing mm. the Reputation era and she stomps her foot and you yeah. can see the cracks in the. I'm like, this is this is and, cool. And I want to know: was that timed or does that floor have sensors on it? Because when the bikes went by too, the light of yeah. bikes, you could see the track for the bike. Oh my god! So I I'm, you could. I'm but... wondering. But also yeah. when she did, uh, when she was doing the Evermore era and they started with the golden lights and the golden lights yeah. were, mm-hmm. were, they were walking along the, the golden lights. And so, yeah, I was like, yeah. is that timed That's, or is that this was motion my sensor? That was where I was started like, this can't be timed because it would be so easy to just be off your timing. I mean, no matter how many times you practiced it, but I don't know. Like, That's it's what just I'm like. Wondering the thought that goes into that like i'm like yeah. that's insane yeah. is that like a pressure sensor like what is it is what i want to know I, but I also, like, i'd love to know is how does that work if you like do you find when you're planning your tour do you only find stadiums that will let you do what you're trying to do or like like how does i have that no work? idea so all that they brought it with them i know that remember back in the day they said like van halen would only have like brown m&ms yeah, yeah, yeah. Like okay, that. so that was something they actually wrote in the middle of their safety contract as mm-hmm. a way I, to yes, see. Yes, I've heard that yeah. story. If yeah, people were actually reading it. Yeah, so I think mm-hmm. that must be part of it, right? Is they 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 probably check a couple stadiums in that area if there are options and see if they are able to, um, uh, like accommodate their needs, mm-hmm. and then. Mm-hmm go with the one that will um, best accommodate what they need. That stage is something that's made for Taylor Swift's concert by okay. Taylor Swift's people. Cause there's an army of, of 18 wheelers that carry that follow her oh, right. I've seen with that picture, all of yeah. the, yeah. And I, that, so that's their stage. Okay. But oh, I, I mean, you can tell stadium. it's her stage. It's a, it's a T. Yeah. But, I don't know if you guys I, noticed that, like the runway portion is a T oh. and then it's like a diamond shape where you can fit the S in. Oh, of it's course. It's T. It's, Taylor Swift like I noticed that as the film kept going I was like oh she has like her own little kind of I was waiting for like the Taylor Swift era to pop up so that the, so that she could do a straight up T right I was like why didn't they do her they didn't give us like gave us one song from speak now and they gave in her quinceanera dress and then they gave us like one song from her Taylor Swift like album yeah. and then like no actual Taylor Swift album. I was like womp, womp. I wanted to listen to the oldies uh, I'm, I'm good though i i had an i, I kind of understood though because there were some oldies that i was like oh i'm surprised you didn't do mine you didn't do like there were several right. of them i was like oh, you didn't do this you didn't do this you didn't but do they this did but cut also stuff. They cut but stuff. also like when you consider the fact that she has never toured folklore she's never toured evermore she's never toured mm-hmm. um midnight um that's there probably were so many yeah uh, and those were the those were the three albums that had like the most amount of songs performed for their eras it's yeah. because she had never done them and you kind of have to yeah. like yeah. new tour. Yeah. We have to do the new stuff. Um, yeah. Other yeah. production design stuff that I liked though. I liked the, um, the caging house thing. I don't, the the thing that she would bring out every so often and like build up on. So like there's oh, yeah. when she did the office building for the man, mm. then mm-hmm. like it became the cabin for folklore yeah. and just the different ways of doing that even like her pianos and stuff were on Yo, theme. the piano covered in moss oh yeah dude Incredible. the the microphones were all on theme all Yo, the microphones the, killed the, the, one, the one in microphone forevermore <laughs> oh my god like i just every time she switched i was like oh my god how many do you have one for every era and it was well, no 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 she reused the wooden one i was like oh there's the wooden one again i think those were folklore evermore she used that yeah like, which makes sense those ones should be the yeah. same because they they're basically a together. double-sided album yeah but yeah. yeah she had a different one for each one i was like yes loving the change in mics like, oh, i great... loved all the different outfits oh my gosh um Oh, gosh. I feel like we should talk mm. about the eras, mm. but like I just yeah. want to say, 1989 didn't need to slap as hard as it did. It, but it's the best album, or it's like I know it's the most poppy, most popular album, but my favorite thing. song is on that one. It is my favorite album in terms of this concert. Reputation era fucking got me. Oh, Reputation that was really good. Is sickening. When, outfit. I don't oh, like that album, God. but I liked that section. So, like, I, I told you all that like. This, this movie made me cry. It was Reputation Era because it was, I did not expect to feel such intense gender envy as I did when she came out in that Reputation Era costume. I was like, oh Oof. my God. And Oof. then right Oof. into the speak now, I'm like, the, oh, the dichotomy. I just, oh, So girl. what got me was 
Evermore and Folklore are like the two albums that like I don't go back to as often because it's just not my vibe. I think both albums are great, but it's not my vibe. When she went from Evermore to Reputation and I was like, the vibe change is immaculate to go from that from that to just like the most hype. I, I would say that Reputation is the most hype album that Taylor Swift yeah. has. Like, even if you don't like every song, it's a hype album. It's an album that you put mm-hmm. on just to like get yourself pumped up. And that segment is so perfect. And then to go from Folklore to 1989 again yeah. immaculate vibe change. i had Just forgotten like about perfection. 1989 and then it was up and i was like yes everyone's yes. outfits for 1989 i was like i want everything dude that hot that super hot dude that's her backup dancer which one the, the man with like the half button shirt that like um during lavender haze he like takes the sweater off her turns around and, and like winks at the camera and then walks away oh okay I mean, oh that man she thought this out so well because even the placement of every era is so perfectly placed and timed and just like flows into one another perfectly and it's like the reason why i think i like that this shift between folklore to 1989 and evermore to reputation is because folklore and evermore are softer slower eras mm-hmm. like yeah, every song on this album yeah every song on those album on um, it's just slow. Yeah. And so to jump into something that is a lot more upbeat, a lot more pop, a lot more jump around, I was like, you have to. You yeah. can't keep it at this energy level. You mm-hmm. got to pump us back up and then you can yeah. bring us back down. It's a nice roller coaster ride of music. Yeah. Yeah. Evermore. I mean, Folklore and Evermore are my faves. When sh- they came out in the in the witchy bits with the with the glowing orbs, I was like, yes, Yo, this is my vibes. Thank you. Brojita vibes. I didn't know that Witch Coven Taylor Swift was an aesthetic that I needed until Yo, I saw her come out. That's, that's what those albums cool. gave me. They gave me like, you know, Fleetwood Mac a, adjacent. Yeah, that, but then she like, know. I guess she said that like, what was it? Everyone, I can't remember which one, but one of them, one of the two, like the vibe was like, one of one of the songs is like a witch making a love potion. Like, okay, all right, okay, I'm here for it. Let's go. I, yeah, it's one like, thing I to am. hear it. It's another thing to see Taylor Swift actually decked out in like witchy gear. In a cloak. Like, yeah. yeah. Loved it. I was like, yes. Like if Do I would have like she one of the things I like about like performances is I have I've tried listening to Evermore and Folklore and I just I can't get through them. They're not for me. But I really enjoyed watching her perform them. Like that made them more interesting. There are certain songs from those albums that I absolutely adore. Like, I love Cardigan, which was cut from this um, tour or from this film. Yeah. And I love the, oh my gosh, I almost started crying during the one. I got in my feelings so hard. Oh, the one? Oh, I love the one. And and her on top of the cabin, just, I Yo, was like, mm, that, the imagery. Like lying beautiful. on top of the cabin. And she's done that before. She did it at the Grammys, Grammys, I think, or um, she did it at a big performance, oh, maybe Billboard. Yeah, I think it was the yeah, Grammys. No, the one. And there are like other songs from Evermore and Folklore that I do actually really like. Oh, Willow. I love Willow. Yeah. Willow. Basically, and, I love um, her singles from from those albums, which is yeah, crazy because right. usually her singles aren't my favorite ones off the albums. But for those ones, it is. Yeah, those albums are my vibe. But, you know, I'm like a Fleetwood Mac, you're witchy, like, you're like a bluegrass girl. girl. And I am a, a sad a... girl. I'm sad boy. Yeah. All, all the sad boy. girls I know love those two albums. Oh, yeah. They're fucking uh, great. <laughs> Maybe I'll vibe with them more because I'm in my sad girl era right now. Ooh, maybe. <laughs> I mean, my like so my really good friend that would like make fun of me or like like just give me side eye when I was listening to Taylor Swift's nineteen eighty nine when it came out. She was like, I don't get your obsession with this album. And I was like, Leave me alone. Let me enjoy my Taylor Swift in peace. She texted me when those two albums came out and was like, Yeah, so I owe you an apology. Uh <laughs> these albums are fucking amazing. Um and she's great and I take it all back. And I was like, Yo, Thank you for wow. the apology. <laughs> We love reformations. The performance for the last great American dynasty. So oh oh. that was so good. And like yes. the storytelling in that and the mm, mm, mm. Yep. So And it featured so that super hot dude that as her dead husband. <laughs> um, there was also oh, there's another one. Uh tolerate it. Yo, oh, tolerate the it. Table and the, the pro- mm. for- when that man walked <laughs> in and the camera's falling behind and you could already see his attitude. Oh, it was so. Good. I just want to say that playing. there is there is Girl. something about Taylor Swift acting against her black dancers as her love interests that always has me feeling some type of way. She did the same thing in the Reputation tour, and I was like, 
I can't. This is amazing. <laughs> Ugh. And then every time afterward that she performed with him, I was like, he doesn't appreciate you. <laughs> <laughs> it was that good of a performance. Oh my God. The Ugh, way she they... like crawls across the table and just flings yes. with the off. Like, mm-hmm. The intensity. Yeah. Oh. I didn't know what song it was going to be, but I was like, she going to throw that stuff on the floor and it's going to be great. <laughs> yeah. The the lead up to it of her setting the table and everything. Just, oh my like, God. Cleaning the plate. Tolerated had me. Who's that like, song yeah. about? <laughs> Well, I mean, to be fair, she said that Evermore and Folklore weren't about her. These were just her telling stories. Yeah. Um, and making up characters. It could be about somebody. She might be drawing from an experience. Who knows? Yeah. But she said that she made stories up for those ones. Yeah. Another performance that got me. This is probably the first time I have loved Look What You Made Me Do. Mm. Mm-hmm. That has never been a song that has really struck me as amazing. I Same. like it, but like I've never been like over the moon about it but watching her perform it and hearing it live i was like this slaps <laughs> i don't like the reputation album but i was like i haven't even listened to it all the way through but I, after i saw that performance i was like am i gonna listen to this album you need it to was that i was good i love the reputation era so much just like like in the context of taylor swift's career like where she was at and just her coming back and striking with venom it was such a good era and just all the, I think that was probably like my my toe dip into like a darker pop aesthetic. And like, I love dark pop now. I love mm-hmm. the atmospheric type of pop. And that's what basically that entire album is. And plus it has mm-hmm. Call It What You Want, which is a beautiful song. But yeah, as soon as Ready For It started, I was like, oh, the, the drops, the bass drops are about to be killer. <laughs> mm-hmm. Oh, the Reputation era is just, it's so good for just hyping yourself up, if I'm honest. Yeah, when she came out with the the outfit, I was like, what do we <laughs> Taylor? And that's the Taylor. only one that she doesn't have a second outfit for. She never changed that one. She doesn't she, need it. She the didn't need it. So <laughs> she did. It was like it might be the best when album. I tell she, you, I the was best outfit. Dying. I was dying. Like, oh my god, the snakes, the like one leg is but like uh, uh, mm, uh. the so microphone that went with yeah. it that had like the rappy bit yes. over her oh hand. Oh my god. It's just I think yeah, everybody... I was looking at those microphones. <laughs> I think everybody who loves the reputation era, it's like the aesthetic of the reputation era was that was like the turn for Taylor Swift. Like that's when it was like, no, Taylor Swift is grown, grown now. There were people in the audience like, you know, kids are coming. It's a Taylor Swift concert. Of course, there are kids in the audience. But then she would sing certain songs and I'd be like, oh, I forgot. Taylor Swift doesn't only make family music. The choreography on vigilante shit. Did you see her in that with the fucking... the yes. slow and then the drop i was like <laughs> oh my gosh Ma'am. i don't remember which song it was but with the chairs and like that's the, vigilante, that was vigilante shit, shit. That's, a, yep. that's what yep. i'm talking about where she like, like ooh, the slow ooh. and then the drop mm-hmm, i was like i mm-hmm. have done that to someone or people before <laughs> it works <laughs> i was like taylor coming with the chicago-esque choreography for us and then like on top of that probably the queerest her concert has ever been interesting yeah. not just yeah. from a oh my gosh what is it what is the There's name of that one song? dancer that he wore the heels the whole time not just two uh, of them there were two men yeah, in that, that just, in the vigilante shit uh, no there was always when you thought it was all women there was always men always in there at least too. one you need to calm down like beyond just you need to calm down even just exposure wise like it's like yeah. her dancers who might be queer I'm sure that there mm-hmm. are some who are queer, but the ones that, that are, it seems like they are allowed to express that through their dancing and through the way that they interact with the audience. I feel like that's the first time that Taylor's gotten to do that. And it was very obvious and very noticeable. In Lover, there was like a queer club role. There it was. just straight couples. Mm-hmm. I was like, oh, this is the queerest. And again, at the end, they were all, all the dancers were wearing Louboutins and some of them, and like the women were wearing Louboutin heels. And then some of the men were also wearing Louboutin heels and they looked amazing. And then some of the dudes were just wearing like Louboutin shoes, normal shoes. And I was like, damn, you guys got Louboutin money for everybody? Like, um, not just Yeah, if you, if you <laughs> looked at the wardrobe listing at the end of the movie, Christian Louboutin made all the shoes. Oh my God. Shit. That makes sense. Yeah, they're all great. They didn't all have the red bottoms, though. That's why I was like, are those Louboutins? All the other ones are. My nieces didn't know what those were, and I had to explain them. I was like, oh, yeah, no red bottom shoes. Those (laughs) kept saying Louboutin pop up in the credits. And I was like, oh, it's like that. (laughs) We doing it. big. Everybody gets six hundred plus dollar shoes just to wear to dance. (laughs) Customs custom made for dancing. 
Ooh. Just to dance. I mean, if you're going to do it for a chore that celebrates your entire discography yeah. over, she said, 17 years. Yeah. I mean, Who Beyonce stuff had Schiaparelli. A Schiaparelli? I don't know how to say the name of the direct of the, but she had like custom like Moogler and stuff like. Hi, 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 and we don't talk about so. that when that concert film comes yes. out. Mm. Um, so I'm not mm. surprised that Taylor did too. But mm-hmm. uh, yeah. another production design thing that I absolutely adored was the way that the stage would go up and down, like the platforms yeah. would go up and down. It just yes. made everything. It made it so interesting, and also there's like almost like a level of like a focus level, like a level of importance or priority, depending on who's where, uh, who's the highest. Like at one point, one of her guitarists has a solo and he's the one who's at the highest point on it. Um, Exactly. And then then Taylor sometimes will move down and sometimes her dancers will move up. Like it's just such a cool asset to have to your stage. And then also Mm -hmm. when she jumps into it. The dive. Yeah, that was cool. Oh my God. I was like, what what happened there? (laughs) I was was like, like, did she fall? Are you okay? I can tell that it was like an intentional dive. But she I was went like, like you, was there was there water? Was there something? Was there a trampoline? Was there a mattress? Right? Like, I right. I probably. spent the next few minutes wondering what they had down there to catch her. Yeah, because <laughs> yeah. cut real quick, and I was like, what is it? And then you know she's just down there running. She's like sprinting under there, mm-hmm. and probably quick changing as she's doing it. Yeah. Yo, oh my god. All of her quick changes yeah. are really good. Especially there was one that she had on stage too during 1989. With, no, during um mm. Midnights. Yeah, with the, with the, the umbrellas. umbrellas. And then mm-hmm. it goes into Yo. vigilante shit after that. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Oh man. The, Everything like, she big fluffy coat she wore during I think it was part of Midnights. I oh lavender haze. at the beginning. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. lavender haze. Oh yeah. my god. I want that. It's incredible. Dude. Yeah. It was great. And it all looked like movable, comfy. Nothing looked uncomfortable. Well, I would now. hope. I mean, I would hope not. But like, I get that sometimes fashion, you know, you sacrifice the comfort. Beauty is suffer for the fashion. There was so much that was so great about this experience. Wise, it felt like being at the actual concert, which is crazy. I haven't seen a concert film in theaters probably since Glee, and being in a theater full of Taylor Swift fans <laughs> watching this concert, or like going into it, I knew it wasn't going to be a, a normal movie going experience. It can't be. But to have people who were getting up out of their seats, moving to the side Yo, of the theaters and I'm dancing. I'm so jealous. People My theater clapping. was not as full, but yeah, people got up and moved to the edge and were dancing and it was just awesome. I was in a near sold out theater and wow. like, just you I'm can- so jealous. You can hear everybody like clapping along and and like you can see people singing along and dancing along, people getting up to dance along. I'm really people- about to see if I can go again tonight because like, oh my gosh. So people funny. yelling at the screen as if taylor swift can freaking hear you she yeah. can't but we're doing it anyway Don't like yeah. that you know but also you know she's looking at social media so she can <laughs> like but she can't hear the scream in the moment yeah it was fun it was such a fun experience to be around That's a bunch the of other yeah, the people energy was so good yeah it was it was concert energy in a yeah. movie theater which is mm-hmm. unbelievable and i've never seen anything like that there and i'm i'm Excited to see if the Beyonce Renaissance concert film is the same way. If that if it's the same experience, oh, if people just I hope feel like so. it will be. That vibe. I yeah. hope so too. It's man, it was just such a funny. Like I would going on a want Saturday that. night. Like, I would never want that for any other movie. Like I would only want that for concert films. Like don't yeah. do that in a regular movie. Yeah, people were taking pictures of them, of themselves in the movie theater, live streaming themselves in the movie theater. I'm like, this is a strange. All right, cool. We're not actually. But there somehow right it's now. okay. But, like, somehow it's okay. Yeah, I mean, I somehow like in ours it was there. not. Ours was too small. There was like fifteen people in the theater, <laughs> and <laughs> but I don't know. Like I feel so like good. a concert film. I don't want to say the rules are less strict, but it kind of feels like you can get away with more stuff because it's like you're not really like oh fuck I missed the line of dialogue and that was the reveal that this person was this person's brother the whole time or whatever. It's like all right, we all know these songs like. <laughs> Even bathroom trips, I was like, I this song is not one of my favorites, so I'll be right back. Like, made things a little easier. Like, you knew how long it was going to take. It was such a good time. And yeah, as a Taylor Swift fan, uh, for a very, very long time, I was like, yeah, this is like everything I would want this concert to be. I was so yeah. sad after I came out of it because I was like, I wish I had yeah. been able to afford tickets to go to this concert. It has been my dream to go to a oh Taylor Swift God. concert for like a decade or and more this now been and the tour I, to go to it yeah been, I'm, well but there's one day. miami dates and new orleans dates 
no nah, i'm so, not doing i'm, not. I'm, I'm like, i'll find I'm one day down. one day i will go to a taylor swift concert and it and i'll have checked it off my bucket list and i will be so happy to have gone yeah. um or i'll just be friends with taylor swift i will manifest give that you i'd love that <laughs> she just Dude, seems I, like such a dope person yeah Honestly, she's, she, she seems cool she just seems like a lot of fun yeah yeah watching her evolve as a performer has been really nice because she yeah. knows she knows like there are certain lines that you have to form on stage. There's like an energy that you have to bring to it, certain things that you have to hit properly. And like the cinematography on this film, like really captures all that and how much that she's learned about being a performer through the way that she moves and the way that she interacts with the audience and the crowd. She's so good at it. Like I already knew this, but like she is going to go down as one of the greatest pop stars to ever do it. Honestly. And, and I think it's deserved. I mean, the, like, a lot of people do sort of displays of power, but when she's like, I'm just going to point at you and just go like in a circle and you're all going to cheer as I point. Like she knows what she's got. She does, but also she does it in a way that feels like she's just having fun with it. It's not really about the power for her. It's just like, I want to have fun with you guys and I want to connect with you. Like when she's singing mastermind Mm -hmm. and she taught, and like in the song, she's talking about like, what if I told you that that all of this was planned and that like it was Mm -hmm. like I had planned for all of us to have this meeting and to have this connection like and she's talking to one person in that song but when she's performing it she points to everybody in the audience Mm. and makes them feel like I masterminded this entire thing that one day all of us would have this experience together and she makes you Mm. feel involved and makes you feel like you're part of it and that's such an important part of being like a musician and being on stage like that like it's making sure that everybody feels like they are included, even if they aren't like one on one with you. You just mm-hmm. flirt with everybody in the crowd. I love that for us. <laughs> <laughs> just flirt with Not everybody crowd. can do that. <laughs> <laughs> Fair. Uh, it's such a good concert film. I need I want more concert films in theaters, especially yeah. like for bigger artists. Like we can't all afford to go to these concerts, but it's really right? cool afterwards. Yeah, the accessibility yeah. to be able to watch of it. it. Especially yeah. now that it's low key become a monopoly and Ticketmasters sort of made it even Trash. harder and more expensive. So yeah. yeah. Show me Adele. I want to see Adele in theaters. Show me Usher Usher. Like everybody big. Usher Show would be theaters. crazy in theaters, bro. Oof. Insane. So I mean we're kinda yeah. gonna kinda get a taste of it with like the Super Bowl. Super Bowl. Yeah, no, I just, I've grown up watching concert films. My dad used to collect a lot of them. I own NSYNC concerts on film, on DVD. I own Christina Aguilera concerts on DVD. Like, I love a good concert film. This one exceeds a lot of those. This feels like we're going above and beyond, not just concert wise, but also in the movie making aspect of things. Yeah, Mm -hmm. it was really good. And again, what I like about it is it was literally just the concert. Like I didn't learn anything about Taylor's personal life. I didn't, I was just just Miss you America just gave me the concert. That, but like mm-mm. sure, but no, I just wanted the concert. Yeah, Miss Americana is also a fantastic documentary. I don't think Taylor Swift ever needs to make another documentary about her life ever again. That one kind of just is it's perfect the way it is. It's so good. This was a joy. Mm-hmm. I also really yeah, want to go see it again because I just had yeah. such a fun it was time joyful. watching it. When I'm better, we'll go and we'll take my baby because my baby can go to something like this. (laughs) I I need a physical copy, Taylor Swift. Make sure that you release this on Blu-ray and 4K because I would like to to watch it Mm -hmm. repeatedly. Man. Also, shout out to her. I love that for you. I just find it unlikely because physical media is just people are just. Or maybe just release the the vinyl of it, like a recording of the concert. Just, like just the release. way they used to release no, concert. No, no, no. Discs. I want the full yeah, vinyl visual. Do it. You need the visuals. I want the audio yeah. visual experience of it because it's just phenomenal. I need all the glitter. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's fair. The different microphones, the stage, yep, yep. all the production. transitions from thing to thing, like everything was mm-hmm. chef's kiss, mm-hmm. beautifully done. I need it all. I need the audio visual mm. experience at home, and Got not it. just through Got streaming. It, yeah. yeah. Yep. Yeah, I hope they do. I hope they release it. I think I feel like she will, and it'll probably be like only on her website. To be Plus, honest, she had um, because of the way that they released it. Yeah, right. there was bl- there was a gag reel at the end. That's why we stayed till the end. Oh we stayed God. till the to the very end of the credit. Yeah, I did too. She had bloopers in there of her messing up on stage. It's fantastic. It That's awesome. It's great. I love yeah. it. And some of those I'd seen before, like on my Instagram feed. It's so cute. Yeah. 
I don't know if there's anything else to say about this. This doesn't even feel like a normal review. It's literally just us going bit it's by It's us gushing like, over Taylor Swift. <laughs> yeah, See, the thing that has been plaguing me since last night is, do I put this on my list? And if I put it on my list, I already where did. do I put it? Because it's not like anything else. But I don't think any other movie this year has made me sob so much for personal reasons. But still, Aww. it's like, I don't know. Ooh. It's, it's on my list. It's too late. Just put it on your list and just figure out how yeah. it fits in your list. I have it on mine. It's on my top 10 list. It was it's probably going to be on my top 10 list, too. Yeah, I think yeah. it's, it's going to make it's it into mine. Good. Shout out to the audience during Bad Blood for singing You Forgive, You Forget, But You Never Let It Go. Because oh my that God. Art, he's only in the Kendrick Lamar version of that song. And that's not the version she's singing. But everybody in the audience, including me and everybody in the <laughs> film, said it. And I was so happy because it's one of my favorite things about the remix. Kendrick is spitting on that song. I'm glad that all the Swifties are on the same page. So that is a is an essential part of that song, regardless of what we're singing. <laughs> Did they yell out other things? Because I know there was a bunch of things the Swifties were like, what do you, you have to yell what, this out? They oh, did yell out other things. There was a lot of clapping in our theaters too for certain bits of the show. Like that were mm-hmm. clearly like mm-hmm. done in the audience. And I was like, oh, y'all got like a thing. I was like, some of y'all went to the concert. The Swifties had like a list of things you do at the concert. There is one song where like they're supposed to tell like Taylor says something and they all supposed to yell Taylor you're fine or something or you'll be fine. I don't know. There's a bunch of stuff that like they just yell out. Mm-hmm. It, it was low key Rocky Horror Picture esque. I love that for That's us. Cool. I love Swifties it makes it more that. interesting of an experience. Oh yeah, I I for sure was like enjoying listening to like everybody do like the stuff that was clearly being done in the concert. Um, mm-hmm. I thought that was fun. God, and in two weeks we get 1989 Taylor's version. Oh yeah, I've been, li- dude, oh, I've been looking forward to that since Wildest Dreams Taylor's version came out. That's my favorite song. On I've the been album looking forward first. to that since Taylor said she was re-recording all of her albums. <laughs> it's been, it's been several years. Yeah, I've been 1989. How many are left like- after this one? How many re-records are left? I think uh, so. One? I saw a tweet. No, I think it's two. I saw a tweet. And somebody pointed out that the only two that she now has left to take back are her reputation and her name. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> oh. Those are the only what was two that? we have. What was those balloons? I have no idea how that happened. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, wow. <laughs> I did not plan that. that. So I have no idea fun. what that is. But that those are the only two that she has left is reputation and Taylor Swift. Mm. Wow. All right. Before we close out, they're they're like there's another small detail I just remembered when she's singing don't blame me and she's ending the song and and she transitions into look what you made me do and she goes don't blame me for what you made me do and she keeps saying mm. it and I was just like you're sick for this this is stupid <laughs> like this is amazing is one of my favorite things in concerts is when like in between the songs like the lead singer or the you know the singer will like say something and it just sounds like they're just saying something at the end. They're like flipping the title of a song. And it's like, ah, oh, that's next. Hell yeah. I was like, the, the merging of these two titles is just so good. Especially in like, when you think about all the stuff that she went through, like during the reputation period and like before the reputation period to say, don't blame me for what you made me do. Like is <sighs> insane. There was like a couple of other small details. There were so many like little small things that I was like, that's a really good touch. I really like that. That's why you just need to see it again. (laughs) Yeah. I know. I know. I'm like, oh, that's a good one. This has not been your normal movie review. It's really just been us recapping all the things that we really loved about this concert film. Also, thing about the cinematography that I liked. I love filming like real life, like things that are just happening because it's so fun Mm -hmm. to try and find the prettiest shot that you can make of somebody doing like something that seems really mundane. (laughs) so like i really love watching concert films because it is like just people performing on a stage but like how can we like there are certain times where like when people aren't dancing if taylor's just standing on the stage it's like how can we make her look as good as possible when she's just standing there Mm. and the composition is so good for like cinematography reasons yes that's me being a weirdo because i'm a filmmaker anyway final thoughts on the film it was super good i don't know what else to say man it was amazing you got to see it like if you like Taylor Swift or even if you just like live performances, it's so good. She sang the whole time. Amazing. I mean, yeah, it's like even if you're not a Taylor Swift fan, just the level of artistry in this 
tour and like in this concert like i can't imagine what it would have been like to be there for the whole three and a half hours and see like everything she did because like whew, it was so thought out and so interesting and like even the songs that i don't resonate with as much it was still super interesting to watch her perform them because of what she did and how it looked and like mm, the thought she put into it so good oh yeah i love live performances just because i also love the the way that you can change the arrangement of a song and possibly make it hit harder yeah my final thoughts if you are a taylor swift fan it's phenomenal this is the perfect way to celebrate her career thus far and to recap it and to just like see what she's done all the way up until this point point. and i also think that like you know, if you've known what she's gone through, I feel like there's almost a sense of like liberation in watching her. Like she feels like she is more free now than she's ever been in mm. her career before. And I think the Miss Americana documentary helped with that. I think the Reputation era helped with that as well. And I think you can sense that in this performance is that she feels a lot more free to do what she wants to do. And if you're not a Taylor Swift fan, uh, I would recommend this to you just to show you how much of an artist Taylor Swift actually is and how talented she actually is. You may not vibe with her style or what she does, but Taylor Swift is one of the greatest pop stars that's ever done it. And she's one of the best songwriters that's ever done it. It just yeah. is what it is. And she's really good at creating a show around her art. Mm -hmm. Especially too, because, you know, over her pretty long career already, she's kind of talked about it in the film, like that she has played around with genre and done all these different things and that she can build like a cohesive show that has all these different genres and all these different eras, all these different looks, and it all works. Like, it's impressive. Yeah, it's very impressive. And I am one of the people who was on board the Taylor Go Pop band for a very long time when she was still a country artist. And so when she did go pop, I was very excited. But I was, I forgot that she was a country artist, I'm going to be honest. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, yeah. <laughs> Yo, uh. Enchanted. Ugh. I didn't even talk about that section. Enchanted gets me every time. It's one of my favorite Taylor Swift songs. So if she only had to do one song from that album, I'm glad it was Enchanted. <laughs> but yeah, that is Taylor Swift. The Eras tour, it is super dope and super well done and well filmed. Everything that you could possibly want from a concert film, it does it all. Th that's it, guys. I don't think we yeah. have much yeah. more to talk to you about. We can't do a what you've been watching because we are trying to stick along with SAG. Taylor Swift had permission. So we were like, we're going to talk about Taylor Swift. Yeah. And news wise, the news is SAG is still protesting and striking. So stand by SAG. Yeah. Yep. Their negotiations just fell apart last week. Yeah. I think we it was, are gonna... what was it? Someone in the AMPTP said like the gulf between us is too wide or some bullshit. Like... Man, that sounds like you don't want to pay up. It sounds like y'all are doing the same thing y'all did to the WGA and... Mm -hmm. I'm going to need y'all to stop. Let's just... And for what? Like, what does it benefit them to keep this going? Also, it my whole thing is, like, it's costing you money, my dude. It's costing like, so mm -hmm. much money. The actors, the actors have, like, you know, they have, like, rescue funds right now. Like, and they got Not they got to money. mention, like, the whole... You make this deal, like, ooh, it might be a few, some billions of dollars, but, like, you're also going to be releasing movies again yeah. and, like, promoting them again. And, like, you're going to make a lot of money back. It's not going to be – you're not just going to lose a ton of money and it goes nowhere. Like, And, you, and you're making the product that you're, like, supposed to be selling. And for the record, Taylor Swift just made $100 million on this concert film without the help of a studio. So clearly the job can be done without you. Maybe you Ooh, should yeah. strike a deal. Just a thought. Yeah. Up. Because right now, like music artists before ha had to go through studios, right? Like Billie Eilish has concert films with Apple and Disney. Taylor Swift has concert stars. films with Netflix and Disney Plus and a couple yeah. of other places. Yeah. But apparently, no, you don't. You don't need yep. to. Hey, I mean, Beyonce did Lemonade through HBO. Like, but no. yeah, but now, now you don't have to. Taylor Swift did it through AMC. And then immediately after, Beyonce followed her lead and did hers through AMC. We figure and stuff out, guys. So make that deal. Uh, right. All right, guys. That's all the news we have for you guys today. Thank you guys for joining us for what I am officially labeling the Taylor Swift episode. Yep. Taylor's version. Taylor's version. Yes. The Taylor Swift episode. Taylor's version. Uh, <laughs> next week, hopefully, we'll finally Wait, be talking you can about. Just call this like creative differences, Taylor's version. We, we can oh, my gosh. That's what this episode is. Yes. 
That's what the episode is. <laughs> that's what we are. This is that's what this episode is. We don't even have Dallas here because he's not a Swifty. Like that's not what happened. I don't even know that I call myself a Swifty. This just fucked so hard. Mm-hmm. Like what you yeah. know? You're a Swifty now. It's okay. Just embrace it. That's fair. I just like I don't. Okay, I did read like a lore document last night. Never mind. Yep. You what? You did what now? So somebody I follow on Twitter is a big Swifty, and so she wrote like a lore document to go along with the movie of like these each song in order of like this is what happens during this one this is why she picked this one this is what the, the history of this one wow so like i read that like right can after you send me that because if it adds an extra layer of information dude am i gonna be that guy it's eric like already accused me work. yeah i know they're wild that's why i'm like am i one though i feel like you have to really no, because commit. i am a, no no i am a swifty i'm just not that hardcore like i i'll let them do the work now, and i'll go yeah. look at me. it later as someone who yep. is a Swifty and presumably has more knowledge of them, where do you stand on the whole Gaylor thing? I, you know what? I I'm still, I don't know that. where I'm at on that. I still don't even understand Gaylor? where it came from. Oh, we're, we're talking she about and later. Carly Kloss? She no, and her and Diana Agron. Gabby, <laughs> don't look it up right now. Anyway, <laughs> let us know what you guys think. You know? I, I saw your screen light up. <laughs> 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 All right, guys. Tell us, what do you guys think? Are you guys Taylor Swift fans? Are you guys Swifties? Did you guys see the film or did you go to the concert and experience it live? What's your favorite Taylor Swift song? What's your favorite Taylor Swift era? Let us know in the comments down below and let us know if you guys want us to talk more about Taylor Swift ever. You guys can find us on Facebook at Creative Differences PC, Twitter, we're still calling it Twitter, at y'all underscore different. Uh, You can find us on Instagram and Tumblr at Creative Differences Podcast. And you guys can find us on TikTok at Creative Differences Pod. Gabby, where can they find you? They can find me on Instagram at Stegosoria. And you can find me on Twitter and Instagram at DuckMcGuck. Hey guys, I'm still talking about Willow a lot, but I am also willing to take a break to talk about Taylor Swift. And you guys can find me on Twitter at Demi underscore Joua. Joua is spelled J-O-I-E. Or you guys can find me on Instagram at Dreamy Film. Dreamy is spelled D-R-E-E-M-I. Thanks again for joining us. As I said, tune in next time. Hopefully we'll finally have the time to record the top five favorite books that you guys wanted us to do. We're still trying to find the time. We're going to try and do it next week. Hopefully. Thanks again for joining us. It's been different. Bye. Bye. I forgot that we were going to have to do a tag. Um, oh, goodness. I mean, I was just going to tell people to talk to you specifically about the Taylor Swift song Willow, and then you can do both at the same time. Oh, my <laughs> God. I know. It's such a perfect crossover. I was thinking about that last night as she was singing it, and I was like, I'm this person now. This is who I am. Yep. That's who I am now, guys. Will I ever escape this hyperfixation? I don't know, no, but you guys can start a Tumblr not. account. Yeah, you guys can start a, a Tumblr account saying it's been this many days and Demi still hasn't gotten out of her hyperfixation. And we'll see how long it takes.